Hello everyone, welcome to Malik Jodh 34 channel. This is Malik Arjun. Today is the day 9 on my rack internal series where I'm going to cover on uh, rack interconnects. Uh, what are these interconnects? How interconnect communication happens between the cluster nodes? And then uh, what are the advantages of having uh, uh, interconnects? And uh, can we implement interconnects with the high availability? And then what are the uh, commands you can uh, troubleshoot or uh, whenever you encounter with interconnect issue? What are the commands and what are the ways to troubleshoot? I'm going to cover everything in this session. Uh, if you see my screen uh, here, Oracle Rack Internal uh, Future Series, I already co covered a lot of topics and then uploaded into my YouTube channel. If somebody missed those session, I request them to go back to YouTube and search for Malik034 and then please uh, watch those previous sessions. And if you are new to my channel, I request you to uh, uh, subscribe my channel Malik034 and if you like my video, please like, share and comment. Uh, getting started with the today's session. Uh, if you see here, like I have four node, uh, as I mentioned, one, two, three, four, four node, four node uh, cluster, and uh, all all four nodes are able to communicate each other with the interconnect. That interconnect must be in a private network. So, what are the uh, uh, main advantages or usage of this interconnect? Uh, there are basically uh, two main advantages. One is a network heartbeat like each node will communicate, or each node will ping each other, and uh, uh, each node concludes both are alive. So that is called network heartbeat. So, uh, you know, uh, this node one will ping node two and node two will ping node one. And similarly, node one will ping node three, node three will ping node one. Similarly, all cluster nodes will communicate each other. So that is a network heartbeat. That's a one advantage. And second advantage is cache fusion. Like, you know, network, uh, so data block transfer between the nodes. For example, if uh, any particular data block is already available in the buffer cache of node one, that will be shifted to node 2 or node 3 whenever the any client request on this node 3 uh, a request for the same buffer uh, whatever the buffer already available in node 1 can be shifted to node 3 and then given to the client so that is a called a cache fusion cache fusion is like if any uh, data block is already available in any one of the node that can be shifted to uh, requested node Okay, so this interconnect, uh, oh, first of all, like uh, can be defined in a high availability. It means bonded network. This interconnect always should go with the bonded network. Why? Uh, I will tell you what is the reason why we need, why we should go with the bonded network. We, as we know, this is a very critical network because uh, the there's a network heartbeat will be monitored for every second, and there's a cache fusion like data block transfer uh, going to be happen across the cluster node uh, frequently. So these are the main advantages. So always we should have this network as a high availability network. If you see here, HAIP1, HAIP2, and HAIP3, and HAIP4. And uh, this HAIP1 and 3 will communicate each other as active, and HAIP2 and 4 uh, communicate as a passive. When this uh, connection goes down, this automatically the, the standby connection become active. So that is called a redundant interconnect usage. Why we need this HA? Because private NIC goes down. This, if suppose if we have only one private NIC, and if this private node NIC goes down, and then that further leads to the node eviction. This node is going to be evicted from the cluster. To avoid that, so we came up with the HIP concept. So when we can define this HIP, uh, we can define during the installation or after the installation using OICFG set IP. So using this command, we can, uh, uh, you know, define this HA concept. So if you see this uh, writings here, uh, it works for private networks only. So it works for private networks only. We already aware that uh, this interconnect or cluster communication happens with the private network. Uh, and then, uh, and then it's like, it enables HA and load balancing for up to four NICs per server. See, if you see here, I already have a two NICs here, and then I can have two more NICs. Uh, at any point, it will allow me to configure four NICs, the private NICs for HA and load balancing uh, on one server. And this redundant interconnect usage can be for your database as well as your ASM. Both can use this private interconnect for their operation. And then uh, how to verify? You can, I already told like OICFG set IP or OICFG uh, with this OICFG command, you can uh, find out what is the configuration. I'll just show you quickly. 
I'll go back to my rack already connected here. So YCFG get uh, get IF get IF will give you my cluster interconnects. And if I want to change it or want to modify it, I need to go with a set. And then I need to define uh, uh, whatever the network changes, whatever the HA, all the network interface I need to define using set IF. I'm not going to do that set IF now. And then other thing is you can find out using CRCTL stat resource hyphen init or hyphen T. CRCTL hyphen init. Where is that my, okay, here it is. For a cluster interconnect HIP. And then other command. You can log into database and check for this interconnects. If you see here at my database level, select our from uh, GV dollar cluster interconnects and Ethernet 1.1 and Ethernet instance 1 and instance 2 both are connected. Going to the next slide. Okay, just to uh, a brief one more time, uh, I'll just go back to my previous slide. Okay, this uh, interconnect mainly for the two usage. One is for a heartbeat and other one is for cache fusion. That is for clear and no doubt in that. And then uh, in that interconnect, we came up with a redundant interconnect. Redundant is nothing but high availability and load balancing. What is the advantage of having high availability and load balancing? So if you have a single NIC card, whenever that single private NIC card goes down, you know, that is leads to, be, leads to the cluster node eviction. So to avoid that, we came up with the high A concept. Uh, HA concept, high availability concept, and if any one NIC goes down, other 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 passive connection become is active, and then whatever the failed NIC card is going to fail over to other surviving. As I said here, I can have four uh, NIC card. Like I have only two NIC card here, HIP one and HIP two. There will be two more, HIP three and HIP four, and then HIP one is active now, and HIP two is a passive now. And then HIP1 goes down, HIP2 become active, and then this failed HIP1 is going to be fail over to HIP3. And then if HIP2 fail over, it, 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 HIP fails, and then it will fail over to HIP4. That is why you know we should have a four NIC uh, card per server to ma to manage HA and load balancing. It's clear. I hope here. I am going to next slide. Uh, these are some of the MOS document I mentioned here. Uh, broadcast, uh, you know, broadcast uh, fallback alternative. Uh, it's a bug, and then uh, if you refer this uh, particular MOS document, it will say about what is broadcast fallback. But just think of HIP uh, is uh, you know from starting with the 12. 12. Uh, sorry, 11.2, we came up with a uh, uh, high availability and load balancing and. Uh, it support up to four uh, private NIC card uh, in one single server uh, and always one will be active and one will be passive and then whenever one NIC card fails and then automatically fail over to any uh, other two uh, NIC cards. And uh, here it is, uh, here I'm, I'm, I'm uh, giving an example, this, this HIP one is getting fail, fail here and then automatically this HIP1 is fail over to HIP1. So that is kind of HIP3. And then there will be one more HIP4 where uh, this uh, two fails over and then it will fail over to other uh, other fourth H, uh, NIC, uh, private NIC card. So this is for high availability and then load balancing. Uh, uh, it will be like uh, one is active and one is passive. Whenever this uh, node uh, active goes and automatically passive become active. If a network interface fails, uh, assigned HIP is fail over to the remaining ones. In network interface, if this fails, it will fail over to the uh, remaining uh, network interface. The redundant interconnect usage allows having a network in a different subnet. So, for example, this HIP1 and HIP2, if it is in different subnet also, it is supported in, in, in this redundant HA concept. For example, this is 192.168.1.1. Uh, series and 192.168.2. series. So if you have a different subnet between this HIP1 and HIP2 also it is supported. That is the reason you can see the color difference here. Okay, so you can have uh, uh, you can have either one subnet for all uh, different one subnet network or different subnet network. So you can have one subnet network for all four of 
or you can have different subnet for all four of uh, NIC cards, private NIC cards, or you can define VLAN also. So that's it, guys, for the today's session. So uh, the the question for today is the question is how load balancing can be achieved using this redundant interconnect. So already we saw that HA one uh, private NIC fails it automatically other uh, redundant NIC card will be active and then the connection will be passed to that one. But how the load balancing will be achieved? So if you understood my topic, please do comment in my YouTube channel. I'm I'm going to answer in the next session. Thank you, guys.